We will just take a few seconds before we get started. We've just launched our live here in a second and we'll just have uh, get ready to have folks join us um, online. Okay. All right, folks, if you are joining us, hello, everyone. My name is George Thomas. Uh, I'm Senior International Correspondent with CBN News, uh, based in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Uh, but I'm here in our nation's capital, uh, been here for the last couple of days covering the International Religious Freedom uh, Summit. Uh, as if you've been watching our YouTube live broadcasts, you know that it has brought together a very diverse group of uh, uh, religions, faith groups, uh, uh, NGOs, politicians, all focused on the issue of human rights and religious freedom. Uh, the staggering numbers are that close to about 80% of the world's population today is facing some form of oppression, primarily on the, in the, the issue of religious freedom and the ability of people to practice uh, their faith. Uh, if you've been watching the YouTube live uh, segments, you've been seeing all the various people that we've had a chance to interview over the last day, day and a half. Uh, just a few minutes ago, did an explosive interview with uh, uh, Father Reyes, uh, a, a priest who serves in communist Cuba. Powerful testimony. Today, I have the privilege and honor to interview a gentleman who has been for pretty much most of his life at the forefront of confronting directly head on the Chinese Communist government. Uh, this is Bob Fu, the president of China Aid. Thank Thanks. you so much, a pleasure to have you. You are My just a, Thank you. a real so honor to me. have you. Yeah. This gentleman has really been tracking what's been happening today inside China. And he just gave me uh, seconds before we came on the air, his latest report from uh, from China, China Aid. It's called Crime of Fraud, the New Era of Persecution Against Christians by the Chinese Communist Party. We're going to be talking about the influence of artificial intelligence and facial recognition. Uh, Bob was telling me right before we came on that today, what is the population? 1.3 1. 1. 1. billion people, 1.3 billion Chinese today. And the statistics is that for every single Chinese person, there are two cameras following this individual face recognition, face recognition yeah. everywhere. everywhere. Let's jump right into it. Uh, right before we go, let, I, I do want to say that, uh, you know, go ahead and, and like our page, get the notifications. Every time we go live, you'll be able to get a notification. And if you've got questions for Bob or myself uh, based on the stories and the countries that I've reported on, please go ahead and put a comment on there uh, and share the link as well. So let's jump right into it. Today, do you would you say that China is the number one country that has managed to deploy artificial intelligence and facial recognition to track the Christians of China? Absolutely, China has uh, entered into the number one police state, the real police state, as we just mentioned. You know, every Chinese has two face recognition cameras in every corner of the street including traffic lights. When you cross any street, your face will be recognized. And, yeah. and how are they deploying it in churches? Are there cameras in churches as well? Oh, All that's the a mandate. Every it's church mandatory. building, yeah, right. every church building, every pulpit yeah. has to install a face recognition camera in order to find out who are the people in the uh, congregation. Because the Communist Party prescribes Nobody under 18 years old, no student, no Communist Party member, no Communist Youth League member, no civil servants, they call the five forbidden policies, will be allowed to enter into any church building. Even the three self church, the state government church. Specifically, you're targeting the three self church. Right. Because most of the house churches, they don't have a church building. Right. So they rented a house, you know, an office building. Mm -hmm. But once they refuse to install a face recognition camera, they will be shut down. Immediately. Yeah, including the largest house yeah. church called the Zion Church of Beijing, yeah. with the, oh, nearly 1,500 members. Yeah. They were totally shut down. Now the church pastor, Ezra Jin, my good friend, is not even allowed to go back to Beijing. He's a Beijing resident. Mm -hmm. 
is not allowed to go back to Beijing. Uh, the, the new report, um, uh, Bob, uh, you come out saying that one of the new trends uh, in, 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 in China that they've deployed is that if you are a Christian and you go to church and you decide to give an offering to the church to put money in the box, what is the consequence? The consequence is uh, a, a criminal arrest. Basically, there are now hundreds of, uh, uh, perhaps thousands, house church leaders are being arrested and being filed uh, with the so-called crime of uh, business fraud. Simply, the Communist Party is criminalizing the tithing and offering. Uh, with the, of course, their logic is, uh, well, you are an illegal, unregistered organization. Once and, you and, have they donation, don't use, and they don't use the word church. No, they, 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 they don't refer to the church as, uh, as a religious, as a religious institu yeah. institution. They try to avoid that uh, so that they won't uh, attract attention by the foreigners. Mm -hmm. And so they use this so-called business crime, you know, fraud, or even some even accused of uh, so-called uh, engaging the subversion of state power. Mm -hmm. One of my pastor friends, uh, Pastor Wang Yi, was sentenced to nine years imprisonment for preaching the sermon of John 3.16 on the pulpit, mm -hmm. calling the Chinese president Xi Jinping to repent. Wow. That's called subversion of state power. Wow. And wow. his uh, uh, wife was missing for two years, and the, his, their son was being also separated. Mm -hmm. And uh, so many members were tortured mm -hmm. uh, uh, until today. Uh, so Pastor Wang is still in prison today. Mm -hmm for seven, oh no, nine years imprisonment. Wow, you were just telling me right before that, just this week, a number of pastors have been arrested on just this issue. Tell us about that. Yes, so under this so-called crime of fraud, and uh, you know, China Aid, we documented this, a lot of cases, just this week, one online evangelist, mm -hmm. along with his wife and, and five of his co-workers, pastors, they're preachers basically online, the pastor was sentenced to 14 years imprisonment. Wait, hold on. 14. Wait, this is an evangelist, just in case you, you miss this. This is an evangelist who was preaching, does not have a church. That's right. Do not have doesn't a physical have a church. church. He's online sharing the gospel. Yes. And he and gets arrested, arrested and he's now sentenced, sentenced to 14, 14 years. years. What is his crime? Crime of business fraud. Because some people watch his sermon yeah. and using the online donation, mm -hmm. and that's called fraud. So he was rece he received 14 years. His wife received five years. Other five church leaders received uh, from three to ten years imprisonment, mm -hmm. respectively. Wow. wow. So you're talking about I mean even Hong Kong Christians. Right. right. For you know uh, we just uh, learned. Uh, seven Hong Kong church uh, members were arrested in China for sponsoring the printing of uh, Sunday school materials for children. So that's happening in mainland China. What are some of the other trends that you see? You, you, you call this sort of a new era of persecution. What are some of the other trends that you see emerging uh, in, in, in China as it relates to the persecution of, of Christians? So in summary, uh, China has entered into the time uh, with the worst persecution we have not seen in 40 years. Uh, since the Cultural Revolution of Chairman Mao. You're saying in this 1966. is the worst since Mao? Since Mao, yes. Wow. The worst time. Wow. Basically, the persecution is across the board. Um, not only the, uh, the, uh, the uh, independent uh, unregistered house churches that used to be targeted you know, in the past two decades mm -hmm. or so, primarily now, yeah. even the government sanctioned church. If you are a pastor of a government sanctioned church, if you don't pledge the absolute allegiance mm. to Chairman Communist Party's later Xi Jinping's thoughts, mm. and uh, if you don't install a Communist Party flag mm. or even put uh, Chairman Xi Jinping's picture in the church on the pulpit in the church, yes, we behind the, the pulpit, yes, yes, and if you don't sing the Communist National Anthem before yeah. you, you start sing service, your service, yeah, you start service then that's called uh, non-compatible 
with the socialism and communism. Wow. So the church pastor will be ransomed. Wow. Some were even arrested. In case you are joining me, my name is George Thomas. This is a very good friend of ours for CBN News, Bob Fu. He's the president of China Aid. We're coming to you from Washington, D.C., uh, attending the International Religious Freedom uh, Summit. Uh, if you've got questions uh, for Bob or comments, go ahead and put that in the uh, comment section. Fee uh, says, we Christians need to stand and take care of all of our fellow Christians in the world. We are actually is absolutely, absolutely right. Not sure if if he is a male or a female, but you're absolutely right. What's interesting that's happening today in 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 China uh, is that this kind of mentality and technology, China wants to send to other countries. The export, to, right? they are exporting their way of persecution mm. to Burma, to Laos, to even Africa. I mean, through their so-called One Belt, One Road Correct. initiative. Yeah. So their way of persecution are being even adopted by, by other countries. rogue nations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, one of the things that we've been reporting on at CBN News, and in fact, a viewer uh, uh, who, who, who is joining, who just uh, made a comment, Sharon, uh, she said, in fact, we, we did this story, Sharon, a couple of uh, months ago. The Chinese government is now rewriting the Bible. Yes. They call the sinicization of religion. The sinicization of, of, religion. of religion. Basically, it's uh, to anything not compatible with the communism ideology is called um, no uh, compatibility with the, um, you know, with the, their, their, the their version. Yeah, yeah. culture. Yeah. yeah. And when you talk about, like, for example, like what kind of changes have you seen in the Bible that they're, that they're changing? Well, there was one official textbook uh, kind of released... Uh, uh, for teaching supposed morals uh, for college students. Mm -hmm. And uh, they uh, displayed one part of the scripture about uh, when Jesus you know, was confronted uh, by these uh, uh, Pharisees who caught with uh, 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 the a lady woman, with yeah. a yeah, adultery yeah, yeah, women. Yeah. So yeah. that story, they rewrote the story and make Jesus kill that adulterous woman Wait, they rewrote the Bible to make it look like Jesus killed the adulterous Yeah, woman. and then the Jesus, uh, in the end, declared, I'm also a lawbreaker. Wow. So that was the communist version of wow. sinicization of the Bible. Wow. So we have not seen the full version yeah. uh, released yet. Um, but that's how the communists uh, kind of try to really um, uh, have their own uh, woke culture, mm. rewrite history. Right, their own woke, woke <laughs> culture. Yeah, right, yeah, right, right, yeah, right. Yeah. What is it about Xi Jinping, who is the, the president of China? What is his ambition here? Well, his ambition is not only to totally uh, dominate and control this 1.3 billion Chinese souls. He's not satisfied on that. He has, according to the Communist Party's uh, public propaganda, he has a global vision for humanity, mm. common destiny. Mm. So what is the communist version of human de destiny? That's what, looks what happens in North Korea, in Russia, in uh, Nigeria, mm. of course, you know, in the um, uh, uh, Somalia. Mm. So this I call it communist uh, uh, version of Sharia law. Mm. He wants to basically make communism to be spread it and um, uh, all over uh, the world mm -hmm. and uh, as a way of counter the freedom and uh, democracy in the Western, in the Western world. world. Yeah. Uh, in case you're joining us, I just want you to know that we are in a sort of press room and that's why you're hearing all the noise. It's not because people are being disrespectful, but we've just got other uh, channels that are, are here also interviewing guests. So, so do bear with us if the noise is a little bit uh, too loud. Uh, when, you look at, when you look at what is happening today in China, China's economy is really suffering today. That's right. The real estate um, market is absolutely, it's collapsed. Collapsing, the stock yeah. market yeah. is collapsing. Mm -hmm. Would you say that today China is really at a very critical point that do you anticipate they could do something? For example, maybe launch an invasion, invasion of Taiwan, Taiwan mm -hmm. 
maybe get more involved in Russia, Ukraine or the Middle East. Do you think Xi Jinping is in a very tight spot that he could potentially do something to distract from the challenges that his country is facing today? Yeah, I mean, Xi Jinping is nicknamed as the Chairman Mao Jr. Mm. Chairman I Mao mean, Jr. So he yeah. acts very irrationally. Mm. So anything could happen. So whoever in the White House or in the Western capital trusts Xi Jinping's word or even sign signature, um, you are delusional. Mm. I think um, so he could do something. He already sent weapons to Russia, yeah. I mean, to uh, to attack Ukraine. I mean, the Hamas terrorists, yeah. they are using made in China weapons. Hamas is using made in China made in weapons. China weapons. Yeah. I mean, so the Xi Jinping is empowering mm. this terrorist mm. all over the world just to, you know, try to counter the Christian. Mm. I mean, I think he's a, a he's a accumulation of uh, antichrist in that sense. Mm. Uh, he's a leader mm. on that sense mm. and uh, he hates Christian faith. Mm. So, I think um, it wouldn't surprise me if he decided to launch an invasion against Taiwan. Mm -hmm. I think the US intelligence community already reached the consensus. Mm -hmm. It's not about whether, uh, it's about when, when right? It's happen. Yeah, when it's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, can you give us a sense of how is the church, if you say that the church today in China is facing its worst persecution in the last 40, 40 years, years yes. how is the church doing in the middle of all this, with all the surveillance technology, this artificial intelligence, the tracking, all of the restrictions that pastors, the underground church is facing today. How are they doing? Give us a taste, give us a sense of, of what's going on inside China. Yeah, I can tell our brothers and sisters who are watching, our friends uh, uh, who care about China, that uh, every time there is a new wave of uh, persecution by the Communist Party, in the past 70 years since they took power, there always a, a new spiritual revival uh, happening afterward or in the middle. So the persecution, you know, to the house churches, this is uh, their norm. Mm. Like um, persecution the, the, is norm to them. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So every time they are facing this uh, heavier persecution, on the one hand, of course, you know, they are face, uh, prepared to go to prison, to be persecuted, tortured. On the other hand, they also sing hallelujah to the Lord, mm -hmm. knowing that there will be a bigger revival, mm -hmm. uh, a much bigger revival. You know, China, when the Communist Party took power in China in 1949, there were less than one million Christians. After 70 years of non-stop persecution, the number of Christians today in China, according to the Purdue University in Indiana, their estimate is uh, at least the number of Christians have reached to 100 to 130 million. Wow, wow. Since 1949. 49. So in 1949, there were about a million Christians. Today, there's about 149. 100, uh, 100 to 130 million. So, 130 so that's million, yeah. more that's than 100 fold growth. Exactly. So, you know, uh, on the one hand, brothers and sisters, let's stand in solidarity, in your prayer, in your support, because they are suffering. You know, in Chinese communist prison, it's not nice. Yeah. It's very, uh, you know, torturous. On the other hand, um, we should, you know, continue to pray for revival, knowing that wherever they go, even in prison, they will start a prison church. Yeah. And even those prisoners, even those uh, prison guards, uh, they ha will hear the gospel uh, more when the Christians are being imprisoned. You know, here in the United States, uh, obviously China, there are some in, the, in different quarters, political quarters, will say that China is the greatest threat, the biggest threat that the United States uh, faces today. We are, yeah. we are seeing in the last 12 months uh, a huge influx of Chinese migrants who are coming uh, into the United States from our southern border. Uh, who are these people that are coming across the border? Any Nobody knows. Nobody knows for uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. but uh, I'm, uh, you know, I was uh, um, teaching um, English in the Communist Party school uh, before I was arrested in Beijing as an underground church leader. 
and that's why my book uh, is uh, called God's Double Agent. Mm. Um, so I know how the communists operate. I mean, we know uh, that they will not lose any chance uh, without like taking advantage of this open border policy. So in the past 12 months or so, over 25,000 military aged Chinese men uh, crossed the border illegally you're from saying, Mexico to Texas. You're saying 25,000 uh, military men. aged Chinese men have crossed the border. Yeah, I'm into, very sure yeah. some of them were deliberately sent by the Chinese Communist Party security apparatus as sleeping cells, as terrorists, as a future uh, uh, kind of uh, disturbers. Uh, I mean, instigators. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. instigators yeah. of uh, uh, of uh, you know our freedom. Yeah. yeah. So there's no doubt about it. So something has to be done to stop it. And then also the other issue that's happening that's been in the news that we've been reporting on for quite some time is the enormous influence that China China has in buying up land. Uh, yeah. Yeah, huge parcels of land all around all around the country. Yes. I and see. some of this land is where? Yes, yeah, some were right next to our military base right. in the state of Texas. Right. So how can we allow you know, the Communist Party using its uh, spy balloon in the air, hovering all over America, spying on us, at the same time building their physical base by purchasing purchasing hundreds of thousands of acres of land in from Florida to Texas to everywhere uh, to have a physical basically a base yeah. of operation yeah. uh, right next to our military base so I always uh, you know last week when I testified before Congress the uh, Homeland Security Committee I called for Congress to pass a law to forbid uh, those communist uh, rogue nations, yeah. including Iran, you know, right. and other countries, to yeah. per from purchasing our land. Yeah. I mean, if there is ever a time to be praying, it is now. I mean, from it the is. conflict yeah. in Ukraine to the conflict between Israel and Hamas, the the, the expanding conflict with Iran. Uh, Elsa uh, says she is always praying. Uh, for the persecuted. Michelle says, may God Thank bless you, you and Thank keep you. you. May his, fight, his face shine upon you, praying you and all in China and all around the world Thank where you. our brothers and sisters are being persecuted. My heart Thank goes you. out to them. I mean, the reality is that today the numbers are close to about 350 million Christians around the world are suffering for their faith. And the good news that despite uh, the suffering, we see the church continuing to expand, continuing to grow. Um, as we wrap up here, how can we be more effective in today's day and age? How can we be more effective when it comes to praying for China? Uh, what can we be praying for? Who can we be praying for? Yes, I mean, as we all know, so this is not a, a battle of uh, blood and flesh. Yeah. It's a spiritual warfare. I mean, the Xi Jinping regime launched this war against the faith uh, deep, is deeply rooted uh, with the spiritual warfare. So uh, uh, prayer is over WMD, the, the really, <laughs> weapon of mass destruction. Yeah, yeah, to really <laughs> like destroy that. the yeah. Satan's regime. Yeah. And we need a stronger prayer, more focused prayer. We're not only uh, we need to pray for those who are persecuted, mm -hmm. for the family members. You know, China Aid has been supporting this. Uh, every family member, when we know they are persecuted, yeah. we try to give them some support yeah. legally, financially, and uh, supply Bibles. Mm -hmm. uh, but also pray for the persecutors, mm -hmm. you know, including the persecutor Xi Jinping. You Correct. never know, right. you know. God, How can God can yeah, touch his heart. the Holy yeah, Spirit yeah, can sure. transform one night. Maybe sure. when Xi Jinping cannot sleep, yeah. transform him in, from Saul to Paul. Amen. And uh, we yeah. need to. So some people uh, see Xi Jinping's portrait mm. on the uh, pulpit. Mm. You know, was being uh, hanged in, in the church, and um, they said, "Okay, well, as blasphemous as that." Yeah. At least give us a burden to pray, pray for, for this guy, yeah. for his salvation, yeah. for millions of Chinese Communist Party leaders yeah. who are, you know, persecuting the church. Mm. But they are also suffering under this brutal dictator Xi Jinping. Yeah. Nobody's safe. You know, many of his right hand men, left hand men mm. are being ransomed, imprisoned, forced to commit suicide. You're talking about hundreds, 
uh, you know, many, I mean, senior leaders are end up now in prison or being killed. Mm -hmm. So nobody feels safe uh, in the Communist Party regime. So we pray that uh, the Lord's hands and sovereignty continue to be with his church, that the revival continue. I'm very optimistic. I mean, even with the worst persecution yeah. in 40 years, uh, we will see, you know, a, a stronger church will emerge in the end. Mm. Are you afraid for your life? I mean, you are constantly a thorn in the side. I mean, this this man, yes. he is constantly harassing the Communist Party. I mean, you are, are you afraid for your life? Well, being a truth teller, yeah. you know, it's uh, not easy, especially when you are confronted with this big satanic Communist Party. Yeah you know, with 90 million members, yeah. and uh, they have the security apparatus. In 2020, my home in West Texas, being surrounded and besieged by as many as 100 CCP thugs wow. in West Texas, right? <laughs> every day from 9 o'clock to 4 o'clock, wow. yelling, shouting, eliminating Bob Fu. Mm. So the FBI and, and the local law enforcement have to Exile. I mean, mm -hmm. evacuated my whole family, including our teenager, uh, high school uh, daughter. Uh, uh, went into hiding. So we were being exiled from our from our house for three months. Wow. And in the U.S. as American citizen. So if you you know if I tell you I'm not you know afraid. Um, you know, I'm lying. Yeah. I mean, as a you know, we're still living in the flesh sure. and seeing your children. You know. Sure. Uh, being uh, kind of harassed, mm -hmm. um, but we know who is in control. Mm -hmm. We know we have a good, gracious Lord. We know whenever there's challenges, mm -hmm. it's not um, even comparable to those who are in prison in China. Sure. So we are still in the land of the free. Yeah. Hopefully, we can keep it. Amen. And uh, so yeah. let's, uh, you know, keep praying. Yeah. This country, we can stand firm on freedom and uh, remove all those, um, you know, uh, vocal culture yeah. and uh, those um, really, I think, noises yeah. and uh, restore our faith um, as a nation Amen. in God. Amen. Folks, uh, just imagine uh, where uh, you were living in a country where you had two uh, facial recognition cameras following you everywhere just imagine when you went to go and make your donation your tithe every sunday and put it in a box that you would be sentenced to seven to ten years imagine if you went online now you didn't have a church maybe you just wanted to say something of a, of encouragement to to people online and you end up spending 10 years 14 years uh, in prison this is what our brothers and sisters today in china are facing. Uh, would you take a moment wherever you are today in the world to pray for our brothers and sisters in China? And the thing is, it's not just the it's not just the Christians. Today, Muslims, the Uyghur Muslims of Xinjiang province, are really under a tremendous yeah, you assault in concentration camp. camps yeah, in concentration the western camp. part. In fact, I had a chance to go to Xinjiang into Urumqi mm. before all of this was wow. happening many many years ago. Uh, but today, the body of Christ is suffering. Today, Muslims uh, in uh, in Xinjiang province are suffering. Today, Buddhists in Myanmar uh, are suffering. We look at the Rohingya Muslims uh, who are suffering all around the world. People of faith are suffering. And that is why today, Bob and a whole host of other uh, leaders who are at the forefront of championing the cause of religious freedom have come to our nation's capital uh, to, to, to bring a voice to those who cannot speak for themselves. Uh, Bob, if you want to get in touch with what the, the excellent work that Bob Fu is doing, just go to his website, China Aid. I mean, it's, a, it's one of the leading organizations today that is bringing a voice to the persecuted church uh, in China. If, if there's anyone who knows what is happening today in China, it is Bob. Bob, just thank, thank you, you so thank much you, for you. all that you do. Can I just really pray for you sure, real quickly? Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Father, I just thank you for Bob. I thank you for the tremendous calling that you have on his life. Uh, just imagine having to be arrested in his homeland uh, because uh, he believed in something that was bigger than himself. He believed in Jesus Christ. And for that, he paid the price. He was arrested and then had to find himself uh, fleeing his own country uh, to come to the shores of America, Lord. And today, 
he and his wife and and the great organization China Aid continues uh, to put a spotlight on the evils that are taking place uh, today in China. Uh, as he said just a few minutes ago, we don't wrestle against flesh or, uh, and blood. We wrestle against uh, a, a principality, spiritual principalities, Lord. And I know if there's anyone who does not hate Xi Jinping, it is this, my brother Bob Fu, Lord. We do pray that revival would come to the Communist uh, yes, Party, Lord. that uh, from Xi Jinping to the entire Politburo to yes. the entire government apparatus, Lord. If you can touch uh, 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 Solomon, if you can touch David, if you can touch all the main characters in the Bible and people around the world uh, in the last two thousand plus years, why why can you not touch Xi Jinping? So, Father, I Amen. pray for your continued revival to happen today in China. Father, thank you again for the tremendous work that Bob is doing through China Aid. Continue to give him great wisdom. Uh, continue to make his strong his word his voice stronger than ever before for such a time as this thank you for the partnership that we have with uh, with china aid lord and i pray that you would continue to just open great doors uh, for him lord in jesus mighty name amen amen, amen. amen. father thank you for, we just yeah. thank you again thanks. thank you so much and uh, great you're work most, you're and, most uh, welcome for your love. Uh, folks uh, we are going to be here all throughout the day uh, we're going to be uh, interviewing some other fine individuals, just like Bob, who are on the forefront uh, of uh, championing the cause of religious freedom around the world. Please, if you if you like our content, I know you do. Just uh, ping us, uh, send us a notification, and if you've uh, ha we haven't had a chance to get to your comments uh, and your uh, just your uh, prayer request, we'll do that in a later show. Again, thank you so much for joining us. I'm George Thomas for CBN News. See you soon. Thank you. Terrific. Brother, wow.